So just to cover today's agenda, Claire's going to take you through the three-step process for super service menus. There will be how to enter your dealer and price settings, how to identify the vehicle, select an operation, how to prepare and finalise a quote, how to use the lifetime service system and also the super service menus resources. So with that, I will hand it over to you, Clay. Thank you very much, Emily, and welcome, everybody. Uh, good to see you all here today. Thank you for your time. We know that it is... Uh, Precious to you and it's precious to us as well. All right, to begin, when you log on to Super Service Menus, put in the URL, your username and password, this is where you're actually going to end up. We call this the landing page. Now, uh, on the right-hand side here will be the Start button for your application or Super Service Menus for Ford. Click on that and that will take you in to the actual application. But before we do that and before you do that, <coughs> when you actually go in there, just take a little time over here on the left-hand side and have a look at the news um, items that we have here. We've got quite a lot of information that we're constantly updating uh, on this particular page, um, like today's webinar that was advertised on there a little while ago. And if I just scroll down through here, you'll see that we've got quite a little bit of uh, information, uh, flash requirements. If there's a green tick there, everything's good and ready to go. Settings migration, some DMS integration uh, information there, and quite a lot of other news items. So before you log on during the day or before you click the start button when you get in during the day, just browse over the news there and see if there's anything there that might interest you. And like I say, we're constantly updating that. Um, so have a look. Once you've finished there, it's just a matter of coming over and clicking on your start button and that will take you straight into the application. Now I've got that up and running, so I'll just bring that up for you so you can see it. All right, so this is the home page of SSM for Ford. And what I'll do now is I'm going to take you through a quick scenario. So I'm going to identify a vehicle, I'm going to select an operation, and then I'm going to load that onto my quote screen. So don't worry too much about what you're about to see. We're going to come back and we're going to break it all down. But I'll just show you how this particular program works. So first off, I'm going to enter a VIN number into this field here at the top of the screen. Click the search button and SSM or Super Service Menus will identify that vehicle for us. And you'll see straight away that we're taken to the operation selection screen. Now I've got three here, service, repair, replace or accessories. We'll stick with service in this case. One click on that. We'll come up with another uh, bunch of graphic icons here. We've got maintenance, scheduled, scheduled service severe and the cap price. We'll stick with scheduled servicing for today's demonstration. We'll click on that. We'll get an automatic drop down come up and it's just a matter of picking the particular service that we're looking for and we'll stick with the 30,000K one here. Select that, and straight away my operation details screen will load. <coughs> As you can see here, we've got all the checklists or all the operations carried out for this particular service. I'm just gonna summarize that by clicking on this little minus sign here, and that'll just sort of summarize it so it looks a little bit neater for you. So from here we can see our service, our parts, our sundries, and of course the all important price down here in the bottom right hand corner. Now from here I can append it to a quote and continue on, but I think we'll just leave it here for now. That's just showing you a brief overview of how quick it is to use. All right, I'll just modify my screen a little bit here so I can see everything. So I'll reset that by just clicking the reset button and I'll reset the actual vehicle details as well. So that's a pretty quick overview of exactly how it works and how quick it is just to give your customer a quote straight away on a 30,000 kilometer service for that particular vehicle. Now, to get super service menus to quote correctly, it has to be set up. So what I'll do now is I'm going to take you through the settings on how to do that. Before I do that, I just want you guys there and girl by the look of it. Yeah, a couple of girls there. Um, can you just raise your hand if you're a service manager? So click on that little raise your hand button if you are a service manager. Okay, Bevan, Ross and Tony, it looks like are in there, great. Okay, well this, this will be of uh, particular value to you guys um, going through there. And the other people there, I guess, are uh, service advisors, that's great. You can lower your hands now, guys, thanks very much for that. All right, so as I said, for super service menus to actually work correctly, you need to set it up. Now it's a one-time setup, once it's done, set, forget, and off you go. Now to do that, we're gonna come up here to the word settings at the top of the screen. Click on that, and the very first one we see here is user settings. So one click on that, 
and we come into our user settings screen. Now this one's pretty easy to set up. What colour would you like it to be? As you can see here, we've got this kind of silver blue across the top. If I click on that drop down, that's the only option you have. So that's a pretty easy one to set up. We've got our language here, our date format, which is day, month, and year that I've got mine set at. Your time format, that can be 12 or 24 hour. We'll stick with 12 and your number format as well. So that's a pretty one, easy one to do. So once that's done, we go over here. If you've made any changes here at all, make sure you click the Save button located here. So basically I'll start, um, I'll, I'll be saying this quite a bit during the course of the webinar. If you do make a change in Super Service Menus, make sure you click the Save button on each of the screens. This is only in the settings, by the way. Okay, back up to settings. We'll get the drop down and the very next one is dealer settings. And now it's important on this particular screen you're viewing now to make sure that you've got all this information filled out. This information will appear on your printouts or email attachments when you're sending a quote off to a customer. So make sure all that's filled out for you. The next one is the employees tab across here. So this is where we enter all our employees such as our service advisors <coughs> and our technicians in here. And as you can see, I've got a few in there, a couple of techs, a couple of service advisors down here. Now to add an employee, it's just a matter of coming down here and clicking on the add button at the bottom of the screen. You'll get this window up here or an employee window and it's just a matter of giving them a title or a position, tech, service advisor or counter person. Um, we've got a few techs in there at the moment so I'll put another one in. It's just a matter of clicking the uh, technician name there. All right, and then you can put in uh, the uh, employee's name and we'll say it's Peter. It's quite simple to, uh, to do this particular thing. Employee number, if they've got one, it's really up to you on if they have an employee number. Their email address. And I'll just put in my friend here. That in there. Certification number, if they've got one. It's totally up to you, depending on how you're, uh, you're running your service department there with employee insert numbers. And of course the same with the skill level. If I click on that drop down there, you'll see that we have a few skill levels in there. And we'll say this one is an expert level. Once that's done, click OK. And what you'll notice here in the screen now is that our new tech has been entered in there. Now again, we've made a change here. We've added an employee or deleted an employee. You must click the Save button for that to take. You get a message saying it's been saved. Click OK and you're ready to go. So you can enter all your employees in here. And again, that's a set and forget. Once it's done, it's done. You can come back in here and delete an employee if they've moved on or obviously add employees when they start. All right, back up to settings again. And we're going to come down into the big one now, which is price settings. Now you'll see that we've, with this particular one, we've got quite a few tabs across here. Now the first one is our labor rates. Now you're probably looking at those labor rates there going, wow, he's cheap. <laughs> So this is, obviously this is my test system that I've got here running, so these, these ones don't take too much uh, attention to the actual uh, labour hourly rates that I've got set on mine. So for you to, um, to change it or to set it, it's just a matter of, say for example you wanted to change one, so we'll take retail here, it's just a matter of clicking on it, the labour rate window will come up and you can change the price per hour in here um, to what it suits you or what your uh, dealership does within there. Click OK and that will take. To add a labour rate, as you can see here I've got cost, fleet, internal, retail, trade, warranty and the cap price servicing one as well. Say for example I maybe wanted to add a, a, an extra trade level in my labour rate or maybe a special level. Just click add. The window will come up. Give the labour rate a name. For example I'll just put special in here for this one. DMS code if it has one and I'll put an S for special on that. Price per hour, and we'll make this even cheaper at 50. The labour is taxable, so click the taxable checks box, and the sundries, <coughs> which are oils, fluid, and parts, they're also taxable, so we select that. Currently, I've got the calculation type at a flat rate, so that's 50 bucks an hour, and that's what it is for this particular labour rate that I'm setting. What you'll notice in the background there is this faded uh, area. Now, that's a matrix. Now, what you can do is set a labour rate, <coughs> um, Basically for a labour intensive job, let's say an engine rebuild for example. Now that's, that's going to be pretty labour intensive. So you could name it engine rebuild or something like that, right, as the labour rate name. 
right? Instead of putting your price per hour in here, you select the matrix and you can actually price it per hour, for the hour. So as you can see here, one hour, then you've got <coughs> 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of an hour, 0 0.3456. So basically with the matrix, you can calculate your labor to the minute for that particular technician that's doing that engine rebuild. So you can actually set as many of these as you like. So whether it's a, a gearbox rebuild, engine rebuild, diff, anything like that, you can do in there. All right, so this one I'm doing as a flat rate on this one. So we select flat rate. Once that's done, <coughs> I can click OK. And what you'll notice there on your screen in a couple of seconds is that the special pricing has come in down here. Now click Save. Remembering we've made a change. Wait for the message to appear. Click OK. And now our special rate has been added to our labor rates. Next tab across is labor times. Okay, so the labor times, they're actually fixed by the manufacturer, but in depending on the region or wherever you are, right, you can actually modify this slightly. Um, say, as you can see here, we've got accessories, repair, replace, and our services, which are our three main ones. And you can see here that I've got retail, and I've made a few changes in here. So for accessories, I've got 0.3 of a percent above retail. I can click on this percentage line here or this adjustment type and change that to um, hours or numeric. So then it becomes 0.3 of an hour above retail for that one. Same with repair, replace or service. You can change it from percentages to uh, numeric if you wish. Again, remembering if you do make a change there, click the Save button on that. But as I said, this is usually set by the manufacturer and it's not really touched. But the option is there if it's available in your region. Next tab across, sundries. Okay, so these are all the sundries that are uh, within the deal, all the stuff that we put in the Ford. Auto trans fluid, we've got our engine oils in there, diff oils, additives, everything in there. The more that we scroll down, you'll see that there's quite a few. Now, if we go across the columns here, you'll see this one over here, and I'll just highlight that. It's the part capacity, so that what it's saying there is that we actually charge these fluids out, or these sundries out, per litre. Now these can be modified, say for example, and I'll just scroll back up to the top here so it will make it a little bit easier. And I'll highlight that top one there. So AF1 or auto trans, Dextron 2 <coughs> trans fluid. Maybe you don't use Dextron, so you can select that and actually change the name of it in here to represent the, um, the auto trans fluid that you are actually using within there. So this can be modified, the sundries as well, uh, within super service menus. Now the big one, which is the next one, is your sundry rates. So all those sundries that we just looked at there, they need to be priced. Okay, and depending on the labor rates that we've got across the top here, and you can see I've got a few, I've got cost, fleet, internal, retail. And if I scroll across here to the right, you'll see that we've got quite a few in there. Right down to uh, trade and warranty as well. So each one of these need to be priced. Now, how do you price that? Well, basically, you pull that information from your DMS. Um, currently, it would be the service manager uh, and one of our representatives, either at the dealership or on the telephone to customer service. And we go through each one of these, right, and price it as per the pricing in your DMS to do that. Now, you're probably all going, oh, my God, there's so many sundries to do, right? But you'll notice that there's a few zeros that I've got in here. And the reason I've got zeros on my system here is that my dealership that I'm working at now, we do not use these particular um, power steering fluid or whatever I've got zeroed there. So I'm not pricing those at all. Now in real time, the few times that I've been out to the dealership and actually done this with the service manager, it really only takes about 30 minutes and it's done. And again, set, forget, and you're ready to go. Now, in some cases, the cost column or what it cost us might be the same as internal or the fleet price is the same as the internal price. So what we've got there, once you've done one column, you can come down here to the copy column button at the bottom of the screen and select that or click on it and say, for example, that my internal price is exactly the same as my fleet price. So I can copy all the pricing from the internal column over to the fleet column, just click copy column and then that will fill out <laughs> that particular column for you automatically. So once you've priced all your sundries, again, make sure you click the Save button so that it takes. Click OK, and that's done. Now you'll notice here, there's my special that we did. That's come in here. 
So uh, I set that special labour rate um, at $50 an hour. All those sundries haven't been priced. Well, I'm going to say that my special rate is exactly the same as internal. So let's copy it across so I can show you what it does. So we're going to copy it from internal and we're going to copy it across to special. Internal to special, copy column, and if you look in the background there now, that special column has all been priced automatically. So nice and quick, easy way to do it. That's if uh, a couple of those are the same. Now, I'm just going to scroll down here on this sundry rates here, and I want to get down to a particular one that we have here, which is oil disposal. And I'll just highlight that for you. So currently I've got my oil disposal at $15, which is a flat rate, okay, or fixed rate, so that every um, service that I do, I'm charging out $15 to get rid of the oil. Now, depending on where that could be cheap enough or too dear, but you can actually change it by just clicking in the column there and changing it to whatever you want. Now, also down the bottom here in the left-hand corner, as I said, the oil disposal rate type currently is set at fixed. If I click on that down arrow, I can set it as a variable rate as well. So I guess you'd do that if you were um, doing like a something major on the vehicle, like dropping the oil, dropping the gearbox oil, the diff oil, the coolant, the power steering fluid, and you wanted to charge out at per litre, for example, you can change that to a variable rate and just uh, mark it up as a dollar or whatever you need to do in there. But currently I'm going to leave it set at a fixed rate in there. Okay, so pricing the sundries, very important to get super service menus to quote correctly. And as I said, in reality, it only takes about 30 minutes, it's all done and said, and off we go. Okay, moving on to the next tab here is parts pricing. Now selecting parts pricing, again, this is fixed by the manufacturer, but you can customise it to reflect your current pricing strategy that you have at your dealership. <coughs> Excuse me. So currently you'll see here on my default, I've got it set at list, so that's a flat rate. Now I can add in a parts price if I want. Maybe, um, as you see there, I've got trade one selected and I've made an adjustment of 1.2% uh, within there above to, uh, to make a little bit of extra cash there on my, uh, on my parts. But that's all fully adjustable here as well. And again, remembering when you do make a change to click the save button to make that save take. Next tab across is tax. This is where we set our tax rate and currently there you'll see I've got my GST or my tax rate at 10%. Um, that's a pretty easy one for Australia. We really only have the one tax rate. Uh, here, but obviously in other countries that are using um, super service menus such as the USA, uh, they have um, lots of different taxes, state tax, county tax, country tax, all these other taxes that they need to put in. So that's why that's there. Make sure that's filled out um, at your current tax rate. Next tab across, upsell recommendations. Now, with upsell recommendations, when we do a service, say, say We'll do a little bit of a scenario here. Service advisor at his desk with the customer sitting in front of him. Um, give the customer a quote on a 30,000 K service. We can actually add upsells in so that as soon as the service advisor selects a 30,000 K service and it loads, automatically he'll be prompted with upsell recommendations such as um, coolant flush, power steering flush, um, car wash, uh, aircon regas. Uh, anything that you want to put in upsell, you can. Once that's set, when the service advisor, as I said, clicks on one of those services, as soon as it comes up, upsell recommendations will come up as well. So let's set one, and all we need to do to do that is simply come up here to section, click on the drop-down arrow there, and we'll do we'll do an aircon regas on that one. It's winter now, so we're going to do a special on regassing the aircon for your summer. So click aircon. As soon as we do that, we get a list of operations underneath this section heading aircon, and you'll see the very first one there is recharge the aircon system. One click on that, come down to add new at the bottom of the uh, page here. One click, and you'll see that comes now into our upsell column. Now down here, you can see suggest upsell recommendation for the following operation categories, and I'll just highlight that so you can see where I'm at. Now I can set that for all operations, which means as soon as the service advisor clicks on either service, repair or accessories, right, that can be done, the upsell will come up automatically. Or I can just select it for service operations, repair or so on. Over here, I can automatically prompt the user uh, with the 
upsell recommendations and automatically select all available upsell recommendations as well. So I'll leave those two ticked and I'll show you what I mean when we go through it. Again, once you make a change in here, make sure you click the save button for it to take. You probably get bored of me saying that as we go through. But just again, make sure you click that save button. Okay, last tab, miscellaneous. There's a few little things in here that we need to address. Firstly, the lifetime service CPI value or customer um, price index value. So obviously that percentage goes up per year when the government does it. Currently, I think we're setting, uh, sitting at around about 2.5%. This is only basically for the lifetime service, which we'll cover uh, a little further down the track in the webinar. Your currency, obviously if I click that drop down arrow, you can see that we covered quite a few different currencies, but we want the dollar value here in Australia and your price rounding as well. So we can round it up to a dollar if you wish. I'll stick it around five cents on this one. Again, once you've done that, click the save button. Click OK when the message comes up and we're done. All right, let's go back to vehicle selection. Back up here to settings. Next thing we have in here is technical settings at the bottom of the, at bottom of the list here. If I click on that, technical settings just gives you um, some check boxes there that you can address, un uncheck or check. This is all a default when you do set up um, a super service menus uh, internet version. Right, these are all pre-checked for you. So you can see there we've got auto advance and basically that's when you select um, a vehicle when it's loaded, it auto advances letting you know the next sections to actually click on. All right, integration settings in there as well. Currently we, we'll talk a little bit about DMSI um, uh, probably in the next webinar that we do uh, covering this kind of information. Today's webinar is to show you how to use super service menus and the basic setup for you. Last one in settings is print settings. So when you print out a, um, a, a quote within super service menus, there's some margin settings here for your printer. You've got the uh, famous disclaimer that you can type in there that's usually at the bottom of your, uh, your invoices and a dealer footnote in there as well that you can type in as well. All right, we'll go back to settings and I'll just bring up price settings one more time for you. So within here, probably the most important ones that you need to worry about here is your, obviously your labour times, your sundry rates and pricing, and parts pricing. So probably these four are your main ones that really need to be set up, including your labour rates, I should say, these one, two, three, four here, along with parts pricing, are the most important ones to have priced up to make super service menus quote correctly. All right. What I might do now is hand it back to Emily, and Emily's going to run you a poll for you. So back to you, Em. Thank you. Thank you very much, Clay. Does anyone have a question for Clay at this point in time? You can type your question out into that um, question field. All right, so I'm going to launch the first poll, which is what settings must be completed to ensure accurate and consistent quoting? You can select all that apply here. Is it parts pricing, dealer details, labour rates, sundry rates, and print settings? If I can please get you all to vote. Give everyone some time to think. Okay. There we go, Clay. Labor and fantastic. Theory. Excellent, fantastic, and thanks everybody for uh, voting on those polls. We're going to have a couple during the course of the webinar. Breaks it up a little bit so that you get to listen to the lovely Emily instead of me all the time. <laughs> thanks, Em. Pleasure. All right, moving on here now. All right, so we've had a look at settings and how to set up super service menus to quote correctly. So let's get into it now and let's see how we can use it. And the first part that uh, we're going to go through now is how to identify a vehicle. There's a couple of different ways that we can do that. Firstly, we can enter the full 17 character VIN in this field here, or we can enter a registration number as well. Now you'll notice this little down arrow here just to the left of the search button. If I click on that, this is the history list. This is going to hold the last 10 registration or VIN numbers that you type in. <clears throat> so, for example, if you were doing a, 
<coughs> quote for a customer and then you hung up, you can always go, if they ring you back, you can always select it back from there. Within 10 uh, is the, the history results that we have there. So here's the VIN number that I used earlier. <coughs> Again, it's the full, uh, full 17 characters of that VIN in there. One, enter them into this field, click the search button, and super service menus will identify that vehicle for you. And you'll see that across the top here, we've got a little bit of a summary bar telling you exactly what vehicle it is. If you want more vehicle details, we can click on the vehicle details button listed here. Click on that, and that's going to open up another uh, panel here where you can see even more information about this particular vehicle, right down to its range dates, body drive, transmission, and so on, and as well as the codes. To hide this, just click on vehicle details again, and you'll go back to the previous screen. So that's one way, or two ways, you can use the registration number as well, of identifying a vehicle. Another way to identify a vehicle, say for example, uh, you don't have a VIN number, and I'll just reset this screen by clicking the reset button. So if you don't have a VIN, you can use these drop downs located here. Now you see this circle with 107 in it? That means that there are 107 models in this drop down here that I'm just clicking on. So we can go through here and select a particular vehicle, we'll just say a ZD Escape. Once in there, we've identified it without the VIN number. So basically we've gone in blank and just selected the vehicle from here. Another way of identifying a vehicle, and I'll just go back to vehicle selection, is just to click on one of the graphics that you see within the field here. And it's just a matter of coming down, selecting it, and we'll say this particular U. One click on it, straight away we get the model drop down saying is it a <coughs> VF or a VF2, remembering we're doing this without the VIN number, we'll say it's a Series 2. As soon as we do that, we'll get the Series drop down and there's 11 within there. And it's a matter of checking the box whether it's a cab chassis, a two-door, XR, the suit, or whatever you've got in there. Clicking on that, and then that will load that particular vehicle as soon as we come through the rest of the description here. Back to vehicle selection, simply click on that. Click on the reset button if you want to clear all this information, and that will take you back where we can identify the vehicle in the different ways that we're doing it. So a few different ways. We can use the full VIN. We can use the registration number. We can use the model drop-down as well as the graphics that we see there on that front screen. So that's all we need to do to identify a vehicle within Super Service Menu. It's quite easy to do. So in saying that, I'm going to throw it back to you, Em, to see if you can run another poll for us. I definitely can. So the next poll is, without super service menus, how long would it usually take you to get pricing for additional parts? You can just select the one that applies to you, please. Is it 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30 or more minutes? We need some thinking music in here, Clay. Yeah, I think we do. Hang on, I'll just grab the guitar. <laughs> I think play a song off my latest album. Excellent. All right. Perfect. So we have at least 20 minutes. Yep. Thank you, the parts department. Loving it. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> no worries. All right. We've had a look at identifying a vehicle. So let's look at um, selecting some operations within that. Firstly, I'll just ID that vehicle again, and I'll stick with the FG that we've got uh, here in my drop-down. So as soon as we select that vehicle and load it, we've got our operation um, selection here. A few different ways we can do that. We can use the graphics here by selecting service, repair, replace, or accessories. You can use the drop-down here, which I'll sort of just hover over, um, rather than the graphics. Totally up to you on that one. And I can select, say, service from here or from here. I'll do it from the drop-down this time and it's asking me what type of service. So this is like right at the beginning of the webinar, the quick run through. We're going to stick with scheduled servicing here. Again, you can select it from here or by using the drop down. One click on that and then we've got our operation drop down here. So it's just a matter of selecting the particular service that the customer's vehicle is in for. And we'll say a 30,000 K service on this one. As soon as that's done, You'll notice that we get our recommendations or upsell recommendations as we did when we set it up. So this has come straight up here saying, um, would you like to get your air con regassed so the service advisors 
can say that to the customer, we've got a special on regassing your aircon, would you like us to do that for you? Or any of those upsells that we have set. I'll just close that so we won't worry about that at the moment and I'll summarise this by clicking on the minus sign here. So we can see our operation detail screen with all everything in there for that particular 30,000 k service. Quite easy and simple to do that way. Now, I'll just reset the operation. So we've still got the vehicle uh, detail, the vehicle um, identified, but I've just reset the operations here by clicking on the reset button there. Now, you can also uh, select a uh, operation by the actual service code. I mean, most of us know that the 30,000 k service would be an S30 or a 60 is an S60. So I can just type in S for Sally 30 in there, hit my enter key, or if you like using the mouse, click the search button and that will come down with that operation window and it's just as per handbook in this one. One click. Again, we'll get our upsell recommendations appear and I'll just close that window. I'm not interested in that at the moment and that's another way of bringing up your operation selection. Now, say for example, um, I don't know the operation code and it's not a service. We're actually doing a repair and replace on the water pump for this particular vehicle, for example. Not sure of the code for that at all. What you can do in this field, the operation selection field, is actually type the text in. Now, I could type in water pump or, for example, just type in pump. Once that's done, hit your enter key or click the search button and Super Service Menus is going to bring back a list of operations for that uh, text that you put in the operation selection field there. So we've got replace fuel pump, power steering, water pump and that's what we're after. One click on that and the operation detail screen will come up. So we can see there. So you can use text in there as well. Now you can also add a, put a part number in there, you can put a repair code in there like, um, like that water pump would be RWP, replace water pump. Uh, you can type that in there. So there's plenty of things we can do in here to select an operation, not just for service but also for repair, replace, uh, service and accessories if you know the code or what you want to do in that particular section. So it's nice and easy to do there. All right. Let's get in here and do our service again. So we'll click on that. We'll click on our scheduled service. Or I could type in S30. Click on that and load the operation detail screen. Still trying to push out this uh, recon air gas to the customer, but he's, uh, he's not interested at the moment, so we'll just close that. And I'll summarise this up for you. So what we're looking at here is the operation detail screen, and this is your, your basic 30,000 k service. And as I said earlier there, very first line across is your, is your actual service, so 2.3 hours and it gives you the price for that particular labour. Then you've got your parts with the price for that and along with your sundries which is your oil disposal shop supplies, <coughs> top up the fluids and your engine oil in there as well. So there's your breakdown and at the bottom of the screen here obviously we've got our total for that particular service that we've got there. Now from here directly I can change the labour rate by simply clicking on the drop down there and selecting it depending on what, who the customer is, might be a trade customer or one of the, our special friends for that special rate that we put in earlier. So I can select any one of those, we'll leave it at retail at the moment. I can change the parts pricing as well by clicking on that and changing it from list to trade or whatever one that I've set in there. I can also print this out, I can add those upsell recommendations in manually or I can append this directly to the quote. So again, within this screen that we've just done, it's a quick quote to the customer. We can say, okay, this is how much it's going to cost you down there. Um, again, changing the labour or the parts, right, parts pricing depending on uh, who the customer actually is. Printing it and adding in those upsell recommendations from there. From here, right, we're ready to go and we append it to a quote. So I click on append to quote and we're taken to our quoting and RO system screen that we can see here now. Now before I get into this uh, a little bit too much, what I might do is hand it back to Emily for yeah, another quick poll I think. Thanks Clay. Does anyone have a question for Clay at this stage? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so the next poll is, what is the super service menus code for a 60,000 kilometre service? Is it the S600, the S60,000 or the S60? Everyone knows this one. It's quick responses. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and they are all brilliant. 
Fantastic. It's good. Please, uh, th thanks again, everybody, for uh, partaking in these polls. It actually lets me know that you are there, uh, for one thing, and um, plus it gives us some good information. So thanks again for that. We've got a couple more during the course of this webinar, and that's about it for those. Thank you, Emily. All right. All right. So we've gone now to our quoting and RO system. So here's our basic quote uh, that we've got going for this particular customer. Now, at the top of the screen here, we can enter in the, the uh, customer details, whether it's a company or a customer name. And we'll just put in our customer's name here, for example. We've got our registration number that's coming automatically when we identify the vehicle, along with the VIN number. Put in our speedo reading. We'll just say it's 30,000 on this one because we're doing a 30,000 K service. Job number, that's automatically generated uh, within super service menus, but you can change that manually if you want. So if this is a quote for the customer, which is what I've got the job status selected at at the moment, I can give it a expiry date by clicking on the little calendar here. And we'll just flip over to September, and we'll just make that the uh, 13th of September. So I've given this customer a 30-day um, expiry on this particular quote that we're doing for him. Add in the service advisor, add in the technician as well that will be working on this particular vehicle. Over here on the right hand side, this is just a summary of exactly what's going on down here at the moment. So we've got our breakdown of our labour parts, sundries, other, and our totals, discounts and so on. There is a discount button there that you can click if you're feeling in a generous mood and want to give the customer a little bit off. You can click that and that will change within here as well and appear on this discount line. Now let's get into the quote that we're doing here. So this is our basic service. Why the vehicle's there, we found a few issues uh, within, with on that vehicle. So we can actually add an operation to this particular service. So say, for example, the front pads need to be changed. We go up here to operation selection, select that, come in here to repair and replace, and you'll see that we're, <coughs> excuse me, I'll just get rid of that drop down so you can see the graphics here. So I've got quite a few graphics in here. We've got for repair and place body, brake pads, brakes, cooling system, engine, and so on. We're going to stick with brake pads and discs. Select that, and we'll get a drop down to our left-hand side, and we're going to replace the brake pads front on this one. So straight away on our operation details, this is the price for just changing the pads on this particular vehicle. Now, if I want to add that into the quote, that we're currently doing, just click append to quote, and that will take that in there. You get a message come up saying that shop supplies are already on your quote, do you want to double up or not? And we just don't worry about it. Don't, so if you wanted to select it, you just click this little X here. <coughs> Excuse me. But we'll just click OK because I don't want to double up on that. So what you'll see here now back at our quoting screen is that we have now have the front pads added into our quote that we're doing there now. So you can put as many different operations in there as we did earlier with the water pump. Uh, if that needed replacing, we could add that in there as well. Now, we can also, across the top here, I'll just rest my mouse on it for you, we can actually insert a line so into our actual quote. So if I click on that, you'll get the quote editor come up, and it's a matter of selecting a particular insert option. So I'll click on this little drop-down arrow. So I've got quite a few different things we can do in there. We can add in a part number, a sundry code, an invoice line. Uh, the famous one that we love inserting in these is a symptom. Rattle in the dash is always a good one. We can add in a, sub, a sublet, a note to the, service, uh, to the technician or the job as well. What I'll do on this one for us is I'll put in a sublet and we'll say that the uh, customer's front windscreen has got a crack in it or a chip. So I'll select it as a sublet and click the insert button. You'll see that the actual window changes here, so we give it a name, and we'll just say windscreen. On this one, how many are there on the vehicle? I think there's only one these days. Give it a price. So being a sublet, that means that we're not doing it at the dealership. We're actually getting the windscreen guy to come in uh, to fix this particular problem that we have. So we'll just say the windscreen guy is going to charge us 250 bucks on that one, or the customer. We can give it a discount if we want. Tax rate's in there and it's just a matter of clicking insert into that particular quote that we're doing. And as you can see there, and I'll just highlight it, there it is on the screen now, it's added into our quote. So you can see from our basic service with the other um, issues we found with the vehicle that our quote total down here has started to climb slightly. Now, 
you can delete a line in there as well. Uh, for example, uh, maybe the customer's brought in his own engine oil. So it's just a matter of clicking on the line and then clicking delete and that will take out that particular line. He might have brought in his own oil filter or something like that that's on it and we can just delete those lines if we wish. So I'll just cancel that so we'll leave the engine oil in there on this particular one at the moment that we're doing. All right, from here as well, I can print this uh, particular quote and fax it off to the customer. I can save it. So in this scenario that we're doing here, this is just a quote we're doing externally for the customer. Right, so he's not in the workshop and he just wants this quote um, emailed to him, which we can do as well. That'll come active in a minute. <coughs> or print it out and fax it to him and he'll get back to us. So I'm just going to save that quote. You'll get a little message saying that the quote has been saved. Click OK and then we just close this window and we're back to our vehicle ID screen and we can ID the next vehicle if we wish or perhaps select another operation this, for this particular vehicle. Let's take it all the way back to vehicle selection so we're right back at the beginning here. So Mr. Flood rings me maybe a week later and he says, look, uh, about that quote you sent me, it's just a matter of coming in here to quoting an RO system from wherever you are in the, in the particular one. I'll just reset those vehicle details as well while we're here. Click on quoting an RO system at the top here. You come into the quoting an RO screen. Obviously, this is all blank. Now, all we have to do here is just come over and click the load button and we can start searching for this particular customer. Now we can do that by the customer's name, his registration or VIN number that we might have, the to and from dates, uh, dates for the quote that we set, or actually the quote status as well that we have here. Now what I tend to do here, um, just personally, is just click the search button. And what that's going to do is bring back all my outstanding quotes that I have by just clicking search. So we can see in here that we have Mr. Flood. To, to bring him up, it's just a matter of clicking on it, to delete him if he's uh, decided not to go ahead. It's just a matter of clicking the checkbox and then deleting this particular one by collecting, clicking on delete selected quote here. All right, but we want to bring it back, so it's just a matter of clicking on it and that will load our quoting in our row screen again. Now, one of the things that could happen here is that if uh, Mr. Flood there has gone over the 30 days that I set in the expiry at the top here, you will get a message come up saying that this quote has expired. Um, we might have updated the pricing a bit and it will, it will say to you, do you want to update the pricing? Obviously we click the yes to that and uh, the total will be different and letting the customer know that there has been a price increase after his quote expired. So uh, we can change that as well within there. So that's one of the other uh, little tricks within uh, SSM there. You'll see that the email button is now um, activated, so I can email this quote to the customer if I wish as well within there. Now we can also, you'll see the transfer button here, we can actually transfer this information to our dealer management system by using the export feature. That needs to be set up at your dealership and it's, dealership and it's a um, collaboration between us and your DMS provider, uh, whoever that may be, whether it's Reynolds or whatever dealer management system that you're actually using customer service and uh, our, our representatives for SSM will be able to help you with that down the track. All right, okay. So within here, right, we've brought up our quote, we've added some lines in, we can take lines away, we've added a few operations in here, or one operation I should say, to replace the front brake pads. I've also shown you how you can save it, print it, email it, or transfer it as well within there uh, in this quoting and RO system. So I'm going to close this window again now, right, and we'll come back to Mr. Flute a little later on uh, for that particular quote, and we'll reset the vehicle details here as well. All right. So what I might just do now is hand you back to Emily to run another poll or two, and uh, then we'll get back and I'll show you the lifetime service feature within Super Service Menus. So over to you, Em. Thank you, Clay. So the first poll that I'm going to... Run. <clears throat> Excuse me. What information can be printed? You can select all that apply here to you. Is it the repair order, the invoice, the vehicle information, or the quote? Just give everyone some time. I thought I thought I heard a little voice in the background there. At M say you can select them all. You can print everything. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I wonder where that came from. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. Everybody yeah, was paying right. attention anyway. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, thanks for that. You correct everything. Pretty much every page can be printed from within uh, super service menus. And they're doing that well with the polls. Then why don't you run another one? I certainly shall. So it is, how long would it usually take you to prepare a lifetime service quote? Just select the one here that applies. Is it one hour, two hours, three or more hours? Oh, I can hear everyone thinking from here. Okay. <laughs> so it is <clears throat> at least an hour. Yeah. At least an hour. Yeah, that's probably about right. Obviously, depending on how busy you are at that time uh, within the service department, I guess. Thank you, Em. Thanks, Clay. Cool. Well, in saying that, one or two or three hours to uh, do a lifetime service quote, what I'm about to show you pretty much is going to amaze you because you can do a lifetime service quote probably less than three minutes. Uh, probably, yeah, probably less than three minutes. And we're going to take our time doing it, but once you see it and in real time, it, if, you, if it takes you more than five minutes, I'll be very surprised. So let's do a lifetime service quote. Firstly, obviously I'm going to identify the vehicle that the customer wants a, uh, a service quote for, a lifetime service quote for. Once that vehicle's been loaded, it's just a matter of coming up here to the Lifetime Service tab button at the top of the screen. Click on that and we'll be taken to our, our Lifetime Service screen. You'll get a little drop down here saying, saying are you doing this for scheduled or severe? We'll say scheduled servicing on this one and stick with that. And pretty much straight away you're presented with the, with the Lifetime Service screen here. So we're going to say, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to say, in this case, the customer's only going to keep his car for, or their car for 60000 So it's a matter of selecting the services or before that or up to sixty, just by clicking the check boxes. And straight away, there's your grand total, 1786 bucks, right? Up to 60000 k's when they're going to sell their vehicle. Now, you can take it right up to the full length of the servicing, which is 210000 k's. But we're going to stick with uh, 60 on there, so I'll just scroll it back for you so you can see that there. As soon as that takes up. Good. So as soon as we've selected these checkboxes, we've automatically got a total in here that we can tell the customer straight away. Now, we can add operations in here as well. Like this is going up to 60,000 k, so I'm kind of reckoning we're going to do a front pad change in there. So we can actually add operations into our lifetime service quote. And to do that, it's just a matter of clicking on Add Operation at the top of the screen here. We're presented with a Select Operation box. So first off, we select the section by clicking on the drop-down here. And we're going to come in here to Brake Pads and Discs. Select that. We'll get an automatic drop-down. What are you doing there? Well, we're going to I'll just scroll down a little bit here to find the front pads. There they are there. Select that. And when are you going to do it? Are you going to do front pad changes every 15,000 k's, 30, 45, or 60? I'm going to say we're going to do it at 45, depending. Yeah, they don't use their brakes much, so we'll say 45. Select the start interval, right? We can do it from uh, the 15, the 30. If I scroll up here or right down, you can see all the different ones that we can do there. Now, I'm just going to back it up here. Instead of saying 45, I'm going to say once only, right? Because they're only keeping it to 60,000 k. So, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to do it at 45. Once that's done, it's a matter of clicking the insert button located here. And what you'll see in a couple of seconds on your screen is that it is now in the system or in the lifetime service quote that we have here now. So you can put in as many operations. Maybe you want to do the, um, the wiper inserts at a particular time or some other operation that you want to stick in here between the very first to the 60,000 k service that we've got in here. So as many as you'd like. Now straight away you'll see that the grand total has changed here now and we've got a, uh, a little summary here telling us how much labour, parts, sundries, tax and so on coming up with this grand total. Now, one of the thing, other things that we can put in here is what's called service costs. 
Now, if I click on that, you get a little summary window or service cost window up here. So this is telling the customer that, in reality, this is only going to cost them 40 bucks a month, right, over that 60,000 Ks or four cents a kilometre. All right, so this is a great sell item in here as well. So the type of the service plan, 60 months, and there's our cost. Now we can actually insert that into the quote we're doing for the customer by clicking insert. And you'll see down in here on the right hand side that's now been brought in. So I've got this uh, little summary here on the projected monthly costs and so on within there. Now I can print this and uh, fax it off to the customer. <coughs> I can reset it and start again. I can select all services, which will select every single one of these automatically. This is one thing you want to do, which is put in the CPI increase. So click on that, and that will automatically put that in and adjust it straight away for us, and you'll see that line comes in here. Now, the 2.5% goes right across the board through right up to the S60 on that one. I can also append it to a quote. I can change the labour rate if I wish. Currently, I've got it set at retail, but I can change that to trade, and that's going to make it a little bit more interesting down here in the grand total. I can change the parts pricing as well to trade, and again, that will make it look a little bit more interesting down here. But let's say this is a full retail customer on this one. We'll just change it back to list and at retail on that one. So you've got some uh, changes that you can make here, and we'll just say that we're doing a quote for the customer on this particular one. Once that's done, I can click Append to Quote, and that's going to take it in there. It'll give you a, a, a little bit of a window here coming up saying, do you wish to append inspection lines from the lifetime service to the quote? So that's every single inspection that will come up on your quote, or you can just say no, and that'll only put in the brief one, as we can see here now, sort of summarised it for us. So as soon as I've appended that to the quote, we're now at our quoting and RO screen, where we can put in the customer's details again, uh, the time for the... Uh, the actual quote or how long you're going to give them for that. And we can print it, save it, email it, and send that off to the customer if we wish. So really, that's a quick way of doing a, a lifetime service quote. So we've sort of broken that down and taken our time, but you can see how quick and how powerful it is to use this particular tool within Super Service Menus. A few clicks and you're pretty much done on it. So that's going to take that hour out. and. I reckon you could probably do it within the five minutes on that one that you can see there. All right. So we're getting towards the end of the webinar now, um, and we're almost finished. So what I might do is hand it over to Emily for the very last poll of the day. Over to you, Em. Thank you, Clay. So the last poll is, what will you use super service menus for? If you could just select the one that applies to you, is it to look up vehicle details, example VINs, trim codes, paint codes, to look up labour times and part numbers, to create full service quotes, to print or email quotes, or to create lifetime service quotes? If I could get you all, please, to choose one now. Everyone's still voting. Seems like they're typing as well, then. Yeah, that one wasn't me. Uh, All right, so we've got most people using it to use full service quotes. Excellent. Thank you, Em, and thanks everybody for partaking in those polls today. Uh, great effort. Thanks very much. And thank you, Emily. Thank you very much, Clay. All right. We're pretty much at the end of the webinar now, so I'm just going to go through a few of the resources that we have built into Super Service Menus to help you learn about it and to answer some of the questions that you probably have. So first off, I'm going to go up here to the Tools menu at the top of the screen and click on that. And we've got a few drop-downs here. I won't go through them all. Uh, probably the two most important ones are the Customer Management. So in here, we can type in our customer name. Uh, within here, we can add new customers in here. So basically, it's a, it's a customer management tool for existing customers as well as adding in new customers. Underneath that, we have our job management. Okay, so this will tell us the jobs that we have in the system that they created, especially here where I've done a few quotes and expiry date as well. And we can search for those ones. This is basically letting us know what we've got in the system at the moment. Okay, we've got reports down here, and this is the important one that I wanted to show everybody, which is the operation codes. 
we've got we've got a full set of operation codes in here and you'll see across the top all these tabs. So these are our service codes. Go across to the next one, these are all our repair codes. We've got warranty codes in there as well, as well as our accessory codes and a few other um, tabs across the top here. But those are built into Super Service Menu so you can go through there and have a look at all of those. Next thing I want to do is get into the help file. We have a submit feedback. Now let's click on that again. So that comes up for you. Click on submit feedback. So if you have, if you find an issue within Super Service Menus or you just want to make a comment uh, about a particular thing within Super Service Menus, this is the form you need to fill out to send to us. Again, it's built into Super Service Menus and if you've identified a vehicle, all those details will be brought in automatically so we know exactly what you're doing there. The issue types we've got over here in the top right, it might be an incorrect part number or information, a description or some type of error. You can click one of those check boxes or you can just click in the comment box and tell us what the problem is and your recommendation uh, on that particular issue that you've found uh, within Super Service Menus. Once you've done that, you can print it off and fax it to us or you can just click the email button which will highlight once you fill in these fields. Back up to help. Underneath here we have two really important ones. One is the getting started guide and I'll just click on that to bring it up for us. Comes up in a PDF. Right, so this is only two pages and it gives you a brief, quick getting started guide to get uh, into Super Service Menus and to get started with it. So it's nice, quick and easy and again it's only a couple of pages long. So it's pretty easy to print out, stick on your desk and uh, you can refer to that during uh, using when you're using Super Service Menus. Now the other one, up here under help is what's called the getting started guide. Now this is uh, pretty much a lot more pages than what you have. Oops, sorry, not the getting started guide. Oh, let me just get rid of that. Up under help, settings guide I should say, and I'll just highlight that again. A bit of mouse control on my part would help. Okay, so this is the um, settings guide. This will help you go through your user settings, all those settings that I went through with your um, your sundries and your labour rates and all that, all that information is in here and it helps you or shows you how to do that step by step. So that's up under help and it's called the settings guide. Back up under help again, under here we've got frequently asked questions as well as our uh, extensive help file which covers every single thing about super service menus. We've got a EULA in there which is just the end user license agreement and about um, super service menus. All right, let me take you back to the vehicle identification screen and we'll just reset that. We're at the end of the webinar now, so on behalf of myself, I'd like to thank you guys all for, and girls, I should say, for all attending. Um, we really do appreciate your time. Now, I'll just cover what Emily said a little bit earlier was, right, when this webinar is closed, when, when uh, Emily closes the webinar, don't touch the screen. In a couple of seconds, you'll be redirected to another screen that has our survey on it. So if you got a question that you didn't ask us during the course of the webinar, there is a field there for you to actually type that question in and one of our representatives will get back to you once we run that webinar report. So it's only about five, less than that, I think four or five questions in that survey. So please take the time to fill that out for us. And in saying that, that's all from me. I'll hand it back to Emily now to finish off the webinar. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Clay. Thanks, everybody. Just to recap uh, today, Clay went over the three-step process for super service menus, how to enter your dealer settings and price settings, how to identify the vehicle, select an operation, prepare and finalise a quote, use the lifetime service system and the super service menus resources. Again, those resources are the Getting Started Guide, the See and Learn Movies. We have these live webinars and this webinar has been recorded. You should receive an email in about seven days with a link back to it. You can also contact us at customer service at service at infomedia.com.au.